All right, it's go time. We are finally painting our house. We've actually painted quite a bit already. We are in a little bit of a pinch because there is some bad weather headed our way, unfortunately. So we need to get this job done. Well, I officially can't see what I'm painting up there, but Errol said I'm doing a good job. So I'll take her word for it. This is pretty much what we're gonna be doing. This whole painting project is on and off painting. The rain just came in. This week ain't looking good. We got the underneath, I guess that would be the soffit done. We didn't get one piece of trim, which kind of sucked, but we got to clean up a bunch of stuff and get it out of the rain. Well, that rain has not let up on us all day, so we haven't got back out to paint and we're starting a fire. It's getting a little chilly out there. There she goes. How cold do you think? It won't get colder then. I bet you'll stay in the 70s. <laughs> nice and straight. What's wrong? It's such a silly saying. Nice and straight. It's like nice and nice and neat, nice and perfect. Great. Here we got to keep this neat, baby. Oh, want this to work okay, good. Okay, nice and straight. Do you want to get that? Good job. There we go. This is looking great. We bought this mosquito net, or it's like a screen door, a magnetic screen door. We bought this like months ago because we knew we were gonna be painting the house and Errol painted this door a couple years ago. Didn't turn out too good, so we're repainting the door. So we have to take the door off. And this thing is actually pretty cool. It's it's magnetic, so look at that. This thing's awesome. <laughs> is it really, oh, hold on a second, what are we doing? 6.30. Oh, What happened? <laughs> what happened though? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> the door comes in. So you were supposed to take the door off first. Ah. Can someone fit through that cat door? What? Remember I was saying to take the door off first? Yeah, babe, I know you were. And I was like, why would you take the door off first? That's not smart. you in there. <laughs> Smack my forehead. Right here, bro. Outside. Come on. There you go. That's smart that dog is. I don't even think a mosquito would get through there because they don't usually come at the ground, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Let's paint the door. What do you think? This door is not as pretty as I would have hoped for and we have had to look at it for like the last four years. Uh, I think we painted in like something like September, October when we moved here, way too cold for paint. I didn't really do the priming. I just kind of like skipped that whole step and that's why this door looks horrible. So we bought the appropriate materials for it this time and we're gonna try and really, we want a spectacular door. So I hope this works out. We gotta get things taped off and stripped and then hopefully prime tonight. 
Wow, this is tedious. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna, gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while. You know what I need? It's scissors to get like a straight cut. Your wish is my command. Thank you. Just gotta keep the end result in mind, you know what I mean? The, fi the finished product. The finished product's gonna look so good. Yeah, it is. Take a paint, so I don't think it's going to. Oh, yeah, it does. Is the next one an etcher and a primer? Yep. Not a big fan of using stuff like this, but I'm really bent out of shape. I want this house to turn out perfect. So we've got to do it right. We're stripping it and then we're going to be etching it. It's a metal door. My biggest concern is probably the plastic that lines the, the glass and then the cat door that's also plastic. So we've got to make sure that turns out good. Well, that took forever and the door is done. Well, not even close, but it's done for now. Getting the paint off those little tiny uh, pieces of trim and the intricate little designs was very hard, but we're gonna bring this inside to let it dry off for the night. It's probably about 10.30 p.m. right now and we need to go pick some dinner. This one is... Oh, you're taking the big boy? I think so. He oh needs to, he needs to go. Hold that one up. That's a prized possession right there. He's a tree. Oh. That needs to be eaten. Oh my gosh. That may be more than one. What are we gonna do with that? One meal. Gorgeous. It's a huge kohlrabi. I was blinded. I was blinded down there. We got this big jar of pickled pike and we want to make some lettuce wraps tonight, but I didn't feel like just having regular pickled pike on there that was cold. So I did something new. We breaded pickled pike and we fried it. And it is amazing. We're gonna make some lettuce wraps for dinner. Fried pickled pike. Lettuce wraps, that looks good. We're gonna eat. All right, we're working quick this morning. We got a break in the rain. We're gonna try to get some paint up. We're doing two coats of paint on the main house. This color is called Heron Gray, and we're using a four inch brush to put this up. We're gonna get up there and see how much we can get on before the rain comes.
Just so you get it out with your fingers. Get a little hair. These two? This is about as miserable as it looks. It's totally raining. Thankfully, this part that we're painting is dry, so it's manageable, but there's one part of our house we haven't been able to get, it's the back. It's just getting saturated, so I'm not really sure what we're gonna do about that because it's just saying it's gonna rain more, but at least we have the majority done, so we don't have too much more to worry about. We are almost done. This is like my lash brush stroke. I think we're... I think we're good. Amazing. Time to go warm up. All right, we got a break in the rain yesterday and today. Got super lucky, we were able to get the back painted with the exception of one trim board. I don't really know what we're gonna do about that. Probably gonna have to paint it just unfortunately at a different time. You're probably wondering why we're painting in the rain. That was not the plan. 
usually the months of June, July, and August can be rainy here. So May is like the only guaranteed dry month. And we did not get to paint in May. So here we are now getting it done and we're pretty much almost completely done and we're gonna be switching gears today doing some different stuff. Okay, the man lift, a lot easier than the ladder. So we got the chimney cleaned out. It's amazing how much creosote buildup gets up in here after just one year of use. It's looking pretty good. We gotta clean the top. While we're up here, I'm also gonna patch a little bit of a leak that we had in our roof. Chimney's done, ready for next winter, this winter. Woodshed's getting a little low. It's about half full. I got a nice foundation for our stack and I'm gonna take some of the logs left over from the outhouse build. We're gonna get some firewood stacked.
Well, that's a start. Little by little, we'll get it done. That's how we're gonna do it this year. Cut and stack, cut and stack, and we'll fill up this woodshed before winter. And up next is something that we don't even get to do every year, but this year we're gonna do it. So let's head over to the Connex. For pouring, Just we should probably like have it. Wiggling. It's honey harvest time. Eric and I grabbed these frames from our beehives probably about a week ago. We've had them inside the house. They are capped and I can tell that they are ripe, so to speak, so they are okay to be extracted now at this point. But I just had them inside since we had that week of rain coming and I wanted to get to them before that. We have eight frames to spin today. So this is super exciting. It's probably like 35 pounds. That's quite a bit of honey, considering we really only took from one hive. One of our overwintered hives did really well this year, so they made us a plethora of honey. We're gonna get this extracted. So this is a hot knife and it's used to uncap the honey. We didn't use this last year. We only had like, I think we did four frames last year and we used a fork. So we have eight to do this year. We're gonna try this little hot knife. It's hot and it's sharp. We're gonna run along the honey and see if this works. That looks like they could go the other way. There it goes. There you go. Oh my gosh, that is so heavy. It's crazy. Switched back over to the fork. I don't know, for some reason, I'm probably just not very good with that hot knife, but the fork works a lot better for me. This honey is so delicious. Totally looking forward to it. Last year, out of all three of the hives, we only got four pints of honey. I don't know how many we're gonna get this year, but it's, it's gonna be a lot. So this is gonna be awesome. I'm not sure about this knife either. There was kind of like a little technique if you get up underneath that wax or the capped honey, it'll kind of peel back, but it seems pretty tricky to me. So I may resort to the fork. This is a good example of capped and uncapped honey. So not all of it is completely covered, which is okay. We know that it is ready for storage because when we pulled them, we shook them pretty vigorously. So that will tell you how runny the honey is. And this honey is not runny at all. So that means that it has a low enough moisture content. I think it's like 17 to 18% you want for storage. Pretty neat fact that Eric and I looked up that honey does not have an expiration date. I did not know that. That is really cool. These could have not been capped because the girls weren't done with them or because it was just earlier in the season. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea to do this outside. The bees are coming back to rob their own honey that we took from them. So this extractor, we bought this used. It's awesome, it fits nine. We forgot that. There was actually nine frames we could have taken, but we took eight. So it is a radial, and so it spins both sides at the same time. We're gonna get Eric in here and have him really spin this. <laughs> we gotta go, there's a bunch of bees. Just, uh, you can pull right here okay. if you want. Yeah. I'm gonna hold right here. I would here. spin this before the yellow giant gets it. Wait, where'd he go? Yeah. It's, he's in there. Well, he's gonna get spun, so. Well, I don't want him to get stung. I mean, I don't want to get stung. It was moving so fast. Yeah. yeah. Oh Not really. I'm afraid I'm gonna get my fingers taken off. Just hold your fingers up. Not really sure why this isn't going our way, but it is not going our way today. It's actually been horrible. Nothing like last year. We had some major balance issues with this extractor this time. I'm sure it's just the nature of it and the fact that these are really heavy frames. Unfortunately here I have what's called a blowout and this is foundation that the bees drew themselves. So there's nothing really supporting it beyond the wax itself. 
Generally, these aren't a problem. We lost one of these and one with wire. Some of the frames actually are like wax and wire. So I'm a little surprised that happened, but it was really out of balance in here. And we tried really hard to uncap it. And it just, I don't know, it didn't work that well. So unfortunately it was very messy. We're not gonna do this outside again because there are bees everywhere. And also we lost quite a few bees because of that. So that's kind of a bummer, definitely never ideal to lose your own honeybees. Okay. Put that back in there. Swampy. Whoa. Lumbies. Mm -hmm. What are you filming for? Just this we're out at the bees. Since we extracted those frames, we are returning those frames now, minus the ones that got damaged. And we're gonna be dealing with the honey a little bit later when there's not as many bees. This first hive, this is the one that we got this year and they are doing great. I've had no complaints with them. Great queen, just found some eggs. I'm gonna put this back. I'm actually gonna be giving them one of those frames. We did pull one of honey from this particular hive. I think so far we had that warmer summer Things kind of took off really quick and the bees definitely showed a positive response with that. Now we're kind of like turning into fall weather here. So rainy, windy, and I don't really know what's gonna happen the rest of the summer. So I mentioned that we harvested honey a little bit early this year. It is mid-July now, and I think it's typical to harvest honey closer to like the beginning or middle of August. Then you rapidly have to feed them a lot of sugar water. I have a feeder box on these just temporarily because of the rain we were getting because it's just so consistent. I wanted them to have some extra food in case they didn't, but there is still some honey in here. I didn't take all of their honey, so they've still got some food to eat. This is this hive's third box, so it's their super or where they put their honey they're filling it up again i assume that we'll probably still have a little bit of like a nectar flow there's a lot of flowers around so i i don't imagine that the summer's over yet but i'm gonna leave it on for them so they have somewhere to put their honey we have two more hives this one is a very strong hive this is an overwintered hive actually they both are so this one has survived two winters though here in Alaska. And it was so strong this year that she actually decided, the queen decided that she wanted to swarm, which is good news. That means that she was doing well enough. There was enough resources that she decided she wanted to replicate, which is where the queen flies off with part of the, part of the crew, I guess, part of the hive. And you are left with a new virgin queen. She has to go on like a mating flight. And we caught it just in time. We got super lucky. So we did what is called a split to prevent a swarm. I guess it was like a controlled swarm. If you think of it like that, we actually sectioned the queen out of this hive and took her with some of the bees and put her elsewhere. They had already had new queens in here that they had made. So we're kind of following up on that and seeing how things are going. I'm gonna be checking this one today. This one over here was a little bit slow to start this year, but it has been picking up. It's doing okay now. I'm gonna check it. We're gonna see how they're doing. I have not been able to harvest any honey from them. These are some good examples of different frames. This is one that has foundation in it. So it's bee wax with some wires for support and nothing's been done to this. So it's just as is, I guess would be the word. This one is being drawn out is what they call it. So the bees are starting to work on this, do their magic. So they're actually adding wax to those and drawing their cells or making their cells. And that one, also has wire on it but i have one right here that is called foundationless so these ones did not have it didn't have any wax any wires any support the bees actually drew all this out by themselves with the resources that they get from the wild so this is actually a very demanding thing to ask the bees and this hive is a little bit slow this year i'm going to give them some better drawn out frames because they really need them they just don't have the energy and the numbers to do a lot of that work on their own this year so that's a queen she's gorgeous she's a good queen 
Uh, this hive last year was a little bit spicy. Uh, they were not very nice when they go into what's called like a dearth, which means they don't have nectar from the outside world. So they get a little, a little spicy then. But I just haven't given her enough space. I'm giving her a lot of comb now. That's my fault. Really should have done that earlier. And I think that they can pull through this winter if we give her that space to lay and if we feed them so they can build up their stores for the winter. I don't wanna... That's the kind of frog we have around here. These things freeze in the winter and then come spring, they like thaw out and come back to life. It's pretty crazy. Cool little frog. Let's put him in the pond. See if he swims. Okay, there he goes. Hey, it went down to the bottom. Sometimes when they're mad, they chew these boxes. I think they're mad that I took their honey. We just found the new queen. So that is what I was looking for. When we were in this hive, probably about five days ago, we found what's called a virgin queen. So that's a queen before she goes on her mating flight. And we had like one window of opportunity for her to go on that flight. And I think she successfully came back. If that's the same one, it's possible that it's a different queen that I'm seeing, but she is mated. You could tell by how her body was longer now. So. This is decision time because I have four queens and I only want to keep three hives this winter. So I have to decide what I'm going to do. Okay, our bee check went well. I can't really complain. It's been a good summer for them. Even though we've been getting all this rain, we are not getting any rain in the high tunnel and it's been probably a week and a half since I watered. Eric and I are gonna head outside and harvest a whole bunch of stuff for dinner tonight. We're very exhausted after today and after the whole week we've had. Um, it doesn't taste real. Do you know what this, this flower is called? Uh, uh, it's either Black Eyed Susan or it's Ellen Campe. Look at it though. Oh, it's kind of weird looking. I know, isn't it kind of weird looking? But I'm so happy because that's like a, a sort of conceit hunt. I mean, bees on them. I wonder if they're not producing that much nectar. Oh. The things that have the strongest flavor to me are roses, but then something on me. These clover. clovers smell. I was like, just about to say I smell. That yeah. smells like honeysuckle. Yeah, I can smell that from and yeah either your basket. Smell the chamomile. Smell. So for our tea this year that we're drying out, we're doing things a little different. Usually we keep them all separate and we'll mix them together when we make our tea. This year we're just mixing everything up and we get this beautiful tea blend. Do you know what that's called? Hibiscus berry. Indian blanket. Indian blanket. I like the bachelor buttons. Look at that. 
crazy. All right, now let's pick some dinner. Oh yeah. Wait a second. Is that Grey Griller? Oh, those are huge. That's probably going to be a good cup. Maybe it's two cups and I'm just bad at measuring. So that's 15. That's almost two gallons. It's 15. This is 15 with this one? Yep. This is amazing. We got 15. I was gonna say cups, 15 pints of honey, which is two gallons, almost two gallons. So much more than last year. It was pretty much from one hive. I have a long lost jar of honey I found. It was stashed really far back in our cupboard and I didn't know we had it. And it's a totally different color. So I thought that was kind of neat. This is more amber and this year it's more golden. Both have an awesome flavor. Very grateful for this honey and what the girls did. This is really exciting because we've had the bees for almost four years now and this is definitely our best, best harvest. We're gonna head outside and show you guys the house. We have the man lift for one more day and there's a break in the rain today. This is it guys, so it looks awesome. Cannot believe we got it done with this rain. Eric and I are almost completely done with it with the exception of one board we have up top. We were not able to get done. We're gonna have to wait until we have a better period with no rain. Eric and I foresaw this rainstorm back probably about two weeks ago. So we really hustled and we got the main portion of the house painted about two thirds of it. We did it all by hand together and it was much warmer weather. So it was really, really nice actually. And I was really adamant about painting by hand. I wanted it to have like a really thick coat. This house has two full coats of great paint. But when we moved on to the soffit area, turns out that doing that upside down with the paintbrush didn't really work out very well. So thankfully our neighbors had a sprayer and we were able to accomplish that. And like I said, it just, it looks awesome. I'm so excited. We even got our outhouse painted, which is more than I can ask for. The door is finally done too. So we're going to be putting that on. really good. Breakfast time. Sourdough. Honeyberry waffles is what we're making for breakfast on our little cast iron waffle maker. Let's see if we can get these to turn out good. Thank you. 
Okay, it's a pretty good looking waffle here. We're gonna do a little bit of keeper cheese with some sugar in there, so it's kind of sweet. We got some of these honey berries, also known as hascap berries. I'm gonna put a bunch of those on mine. And what would this be without some fresh honey all over the top? Absolutely delicious. Looks like a good breakfast. We're probably gonna make like two more of these each and then we're gonna head outside and we're gonna get a little bit more work done on our rental, the man lift, before we gotta return it. Well, I'm happy to say that the painting of the house is officially done. We are having such a nice summer here in Alaska. It was hotter than usual. We had these nice, beautiful days. And then as soon as we picked up our rental, things changed like that. It got cold, it got windy. We've just had almost nonstop rain, just small gaps when we were able to finish painting this house. This whole project actually started back in May for us when there was a lot of snow and ice on the ground. We wanted to do house wrap, which we did. We completely recited the whole entire cabin. We did a bunch of nice new trim. And then the final thing that we needed to do was paint. We've actually wanted to paint this cabin since we moved here, which was four years ago. So I'm really excited that we finally got this project done. So I'm just really happy with the way this thing turned out. And I think having that brown door up really tied the whole paint scheme together. And there's one more thing. We are gonna do this house, but we kind of ran out of time and we ran out of good weather. And that is the deck. We need a couple repairs done on it that we're gonna do. It frost heaved a little bit, we're gonna take care of that. And then this deck already had a solid stain on it, which is a kind of a lighter color. We bought another stain for it, a solid stain, which is a darker color, almost as dark as the front door. That's a project for another time. We're done for this one. See you guys next time.